this is a demo of Silent, uh, Silent Trinity. So um, here's my setup here. I have a Kali Linux machine set up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and run um, the Python 3.7, which is required uh, and for Silent Trinity. And then I also set up a resource file for the listener portion of it. So I don't have to type it all in when I execute my script. And this resource file, it's not required, but again, it's for convenience. And you can see here I created a resource file ahead of time that uh, it's basically these are the commands I would have to manually type in listeners, each HTTP, that's the listener protocol, the IP address 192.168.10, port 5555, or whatever port you want, and start. That's what I'm using for my setup here. Okay. And then, um, so I'll go ahead and start this with Silent Trinity. You can see here that all those commands have been typed in. So now I'm fairly uh, ready to go here. So now I need to create my stager. That's the uh, payload I want to distribute to the endpoint. Type in stager and I can type in list. And these are my options. I can do PowerShell, MS Build, or Windows uh, WMIC here. Um, but in this case, I'm going to use uh, MS Build. And then I'm going to say generate HTTP to associate with my HTTP protocol here. And you can see here now a generated file called msbell.xml that I'm going to deliver to my victim. And then also have the victim launch uh, using msbell.exe, which is uh, signed and embedded in the Windows 10. So there's really nothing new I'm creating. And then I'm going to launch that XML file that I uh, built with Silent Trinity here. And you can see here when I did this, it, um, it wrote a file msbell.xml here, but in this case, I just renamed it to ssh.xml. And then this command um, that I'm going to run here, I just created a, uh, a batch file that I'm sending to the victim for them to run. And, and so in this case, you can see here, I'm going to open it. I just created a batch call file called uh, um, I'm going to launch PowerShell at the prompt, or I can use DOS either way. And then um, this is the path on my on the Windows machine, and to launch that SSH.xml file. Okay. So I created those two files already, and then so I, I went ahead and created, drafted an email and sent that to my victim. And, and as you can see here, here's the email that I sent. And it's from Lilo to Stitch, and Stitch gets an email from Lilo, and then there are two attachments. That's the batch file to run and the XML file called SSH. So he's got to draft a, a phishing email that's enticing to get the victim to run here. And before I execute this, you can check that my uh, Windows Defender virus setting is up to date. It's today's March 1st, according to my here, and it's 515. So it's about 15 minutes ago I did the update for Windows virus and threat protection. And the setting is real-time protection on and cloud deliver protection is on as well. Okay, only thing I have off is the file submission. I don't want to submit new file samples into the Microsoft Cloud. Okay, and now and let's go ahead and download this file, um, SSH. You can see here that actually downloaded earlier and there was no prompting uh, or blocking by Windows Defender. And also this new SSH batch file I downloaded earlier as well, and there was no prompting here. And so I'm going to go ahead, basically as the victim, launch the new SSH program here, you can see here. And this is running, um, contacting back to my Kali Linux machine, and it's actually downloading a bunch of DLLs in terms of Iron Python, um, Boolang, Interpreter, etc. So it's running in the background. So what has happened since this has run? And you can see here there's no pop-up whatsoever by Windows Defender, okay? And back in Kali, I can already see here there's a, a new session. So now I can say session, do a list, and you can see there's a session with the uh, good idea of, of my Windows 10 machine, okay? So now I am uh, pretty much have a backdoor uh, connected. So now I can do some modules to conduct further attacks. And let's do a list of the modules, see what's available. You can see there is a bunch of modules in terms of the Boolang language. Um, I can do a mouse shaker. I can do a message box, IP config, as well as um, the IP-wise for the Iron Python that um, I can run some PowerShell commands, which is against what 
we want to do in the first place is we don't want to run some PowerShell commands to, to avoid detection. I can run a bunch of these commands. There's a shell, there's a message box, et cetera. Right? So uh, let's go ahead and do uh, Iron Python for system info as well as message box. Let's say use uh, IPY for Iron Python system info. And let's just do a run all. And there it is. That's my information from my test client Windows 10 VM here on the back here. And if I do, let's do a use IPY message box. And let's, if you do options, just to take a look at what options, you can do set text. Hello, Jerry. I am in your PC today. Let's play a play a game. And then I guess we're going to do a run all. Now I sent a text message and let's look at the target machine and there it is. Hello Jerry, I'm in your PC. Let's play a game. Okay, and this whole time there's no Windows Defender pop-up whatsoever. And I can do, um, let's look at some other module as well. Do a mouse shaker using the Boolang language. So use boo mouse shaker options, really none. So just run all here or run that, uh, that good ID that I have here. And let's go take a look. You can see I'm not doing anything, but the mouse shaker is shaking the mouse, right? It kind of spooks the victim there. 